Hello and welcome to DecodingPacket.info's multicast VPN video series. In this very first uh, video of this video series, we are going to be covering basic Rosen GRE model, or also called the GRE-based MDT model nowadays, or the multicast distribution tree. Now, this is a fairly advanced level video series, so there are some prerequisites, unfortunately, to this. There are some things you need to bring to the table already in order to enhance your understanding of multicast VPNs. One of the very first things, you should be pretty comfortable with IP multicast itself. So decodingpacket.info itself has a introductory series on, uh, on IP multicast. And if any of these terms sound unfamiliar to you, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch that series first before coming back to this one. So things like protocol independent multicast, any source multicast and source specific multicast are absolute prerequisites and you must know them in order to understand the material that are going to be discussed in this video series. Things like PIM bidirectional or BIDER, they're optional, but they would definitely enhance your understanding of what is being discussed in this lecture series. The second thing is basic understanding of MPLS. So you should not be stumped by terms such as LSPs, what is LDP, and for example, you should at least know what is RSVP traffic engineering. Although it is an optional topic, but it is something that will be mentioned, and you should have a decent understanding of these topics. Finally, you should have a thorough understanding of how MPLS layer 3 VPNs work. Because what we are going to do is all of the multicast VPNs, they will be built on top of the traditional MPLS layer 3 VPN. And if you do not understand that, uh, frankly, you will not be able to follow much of what is being discussed in this particular lecture series. So it is assumed that you know the details of the PE and the P functionality, how the provider edges and how the provider routers work, and uh, what are their functions in a given system. It is also assumed that you understand the basic PE to CE routing techniques. So for example, how is OSPF used between the PE to CE, how BGP is used, and uh, how any of the other protocols will be used. Uh, we may not be going in depth with a lot of that, but there's definitely going to be a PE to CE protocol already running. On top of that, we build the um, multicast VPN. So what is multicast VPN or what is a multicast VPN? The basic idea is to provide IP multicast transit services to SP customers in addition to the layer 3 VPN services they are already receiving. So with the layer 3 VPN services, you're providing a unicast transit path to the customers. With MVPN, you're also going to provide them a multicast transit path or transit services across the same SP core. So for example, if a, uh, if a customer has a receiver or several receivers in site number two, of the same VPN, and then there is a sender in site one of the same VPN, the receivers then should be able to signal to the sender to send the traffic, and finally the sender should be able to send the traffic across the same SP core that the layer three VPN is working on, but in a multicast fashion. Most often what is going to happen with MVPN is we are going to take the customer's PIM, protocol independent multicast, and from this point on, we will definitely uh, call it CPIM. So this is going to be something that comes, um, is going to be, this term is going to be used often enough, but CPIM is from this point on going to refer to the PIM that is running at the customer sites. So if you have three customer sites and they all run PIM, then these are all instances of CPIM. And what the multicast VPN is going to try to do or accomplish to do is have the CPIM work across the SP core. So you should be able to signal PIM across the SP core. The PEs, the provider edge routers, will transport CPIM messages 
across the SP Core. Now, how they do this, those are actually the nitty gritty details of MVPN. Sometimes it is tunneled, sometimes it is translated to a different sort of message. But rest assured, there are various, various methods available to the PEs, and all of them serve to get these CPIM signaling or CPIM messages across the SP Core. So to that extent, the PEs will run the CPIM instances inside the VRF context. So each of the PEs, in addition to running a routing protocol, unicast routing protocol, they will also be running CPIM inside the VRF. And what's going to happen then, because they are running CPIM inside the VRF, they are going to form CPIM neighbor relationships with the CEs, with their respective CEs that they are connected to. So for example, when you look at a show IP PIM neighbor uh, show command inside the VRF, you will see that the PE is adjacent to the CE. And then they're going to get all of these signaling inside at least the VRF and try to get it across the SP core. An important thing to note here, the SP may also be running its own PIM. So the SP core may also be running multicast in its own core. And from this point on for this lecture series, that would be called PPIM or provider PIM. So it is completely a different protocol than CPIM. It runs in the global uh, multicast table or the global context, while CPIM will run inside the customer's VRF. But the uh, distinction between the two of them is extremely important and uh, you should always take care to call CPIM CPIM and then provider PIM PPIM. That then brings us to the very first model that is available as an option for MVPNs. And this is the Rosen model or the Rosen multicast distribution tree, or also simply nowadays called the multicast distribution tree or MDT. The name Rosen comes from the famous network engineer, Eric Rosen, who is responsible for a plethora of RFCs for the IETF. The most notable amongst them is the basic MPLS RFC and the MPLS layer three VPN RFC. But there are also a bunch of others, including this one. So this started off as a document called Draft Rosen, an internet draft, and it was later turned into a historic RFC, RFC 6037. So all of the details for this are available in RFC 6037. And what it is using or what it is doing is it is treating the SP core as if it was a LAN. So the protocol auto discovery via multicast is already widely used by a number of different protocols. So for example, OSPF routers on a broadcast segment, they discover each other using IP multicast. So each of the OSPF routers sends hellos on 224.0.0.5 and they're also listening for their neighbor's hellos on 224.0.0.5. This allows you without any explicit configuration uh, to create an OSPF network where the routers auto discover each other, they form adjacencies with each other, they uh, do all of the OSPF things with each other, but without any specific configuration except just turning OSPF on on that particular broadcast link. What Rosen MDT or Draft Rosen is going to do is it's going to use the same sort of uh, fundamentals to extend CPIM across the SP core. So for example, this is your SP core with three PEs. They are all connected to three CEs and they're probably running PIM with those CEs. And what's going to happen then is that VRF bounded PIM, the CPIM, is then going to be extended across the SP core. And in essence, this SP core is going to sort of vanish from a multicast point of view. And what's going to be left is a, uh, an SP core that PPIM or CPIM treats as if it was a LAN. So it also allows the PE routers to auto discover each other. And at the end of the day, all of these PE routers, they're going to become adjacent with each other. These routers are all going to be 
BIM adjacent with each other. So in a sense, what's happening here is the CPIM signaling is it, it's overlaid on the SP core. So you're running CPIM on top of the SP core, but transparent to the SP core. So you need a transport. You need a transport to get the PIM packets from, for example, from PE1's VRF to PE2's VRF and to PE3's VRF. So you need to tunnel these packets somehow. Originally, MPLS was not an available option. So even though you're using MPLS for the unicast routing tape or for the unicast packets, for the multicast packets, it was actually just multicast that was used in the SP core. So you would use P multicast to get the packets across uh, the multicast core from one PE to another PE. And this was true for both control and data packets. So the PIM packets or the control packets were encapsulated the same way the data packets, the actual multicast traffic was encapsulated. However, currently there is a pure MPLS option that is available for transport. So now you can use MPLS in the core without having to run IP multicast in the core to get the, uh, the data packets and the control packets across. So what PIM then does is it uses multi-point uh, multi GRE as a transport. So I'm hoping at this point you're familiar with what Unicast GRE is. If not, go brush up on that. But what's the difference between unicast GRE and multicast or multi-point GRE is multi-point GRE uses, instead of a unicast routing address, its destination IP address is an IP multicast group. So it is the same packet, but the destination IP, instead of being just a unicast IP for a point-to-point -point tunnel, for a point-to-multi-point tunnel, the destination is an IP multicast group. All of the interested PEs will, dis, uh, will join this pre-decided group. So you have to decide which group is going to carry the uh, traffic from PE to PE. But once that group is decided, you program that group on the PEs, and then they go ahead and they join that group. They are receivers on that group. They are also senders on that group. But through the multicast core, you use PPIM or provider PIM to signal this group. So that's how all of the routers know where the rendezvous point is and how to build that tree. But the resulting multi-point to multi-point tree, because remember, all of the PEs are also senders and they're also receivers. So this tree is not a point to multi-point tree. In essence, it is a multi-point to multi-point tree or think of PIM binder when you think about this. And this is called the default multicast distribution tree. It is nothing more than an uh, IP multicast tree, but it happens to have all of the, uh, all of the PEs as senders and also as clients. Now, data traffic can use the same default MDT, and by default, if you don't do anything else, that's what it does, but it may not be the most optimal choice. So this is something that is uh, much more relevant or becomes much clearer when we go to the actual configuration and take a look at that. But for right now, remember that multi-point GRE tunnels are going to be used and all of the PEs are going to become PIM adjacent with each other. The details of this are up next in our next lecture, which is going to be Rosen GRE or MDT, MDT GRE and its implementation on iOS and iOS XR. Once again, we thank you for being with us and we hope that you would join us for the next lecture.